It's election interference at the highest level. There's never been anything like what's happened. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. A political persecution. That's how former U.S. President Donald Trump describes his indictment for taking home classified documents. How will this impact his run for the White House? Hello, I'm Arnold Nido, and this is The Heat. Donald Trump became the first United States president to face federal criminal charges. He was indicted in multiple charges, including conspiracy to obstruct justice and violating the Espionage Act. More than 100 classified files were discovered in his Florida home after leaving the White House. We begin with this report from Nitsa Soledad Perez in Miami. A Miami grand jury has just indicted former President Donald J. Trump on 37 federal criminal charges in an investigation into how he handled classified documents after leaving the White House and how he allegedly obstructed government efforts to recover them. Now, among these charges are false statements, conspiracy to obstruct, willfully retaining documents in violation of the Espionage Act. Now, the documents Trump kept in his boxes included information about U.S. and foreign defense and weapons capabilities, U.S. nuclear programs, and potential vulnerabilities to the U.S. and its allies to military attacks, and I'm citing from the actual indictment. Now, uh, Special Counsel Jack Smith had a short press a conference this Friday defending his team and just telling the U.S. audience that laws apply to everybody equally in the country. Prosecutors in my office are among the most talented and experienced in the Department of Justice. They have investigated this case hewing to the highest ethical standards, and they will continue to do so. My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. Now, this indictment comes after more than 100 documents with uh, classified markings were found in Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort here in Florida. And that's the reason, because the alleged crime happened in the state, is that we're seeing that it's this indictment coming from Miami's federal court. Trump himself was the one that revealed this indictment via his post on Truth Social, that is, his social uh, media app. He also added that he had been summoned to uh, an appearance at this court next Tuesday at 3 p.m., Eastern Time. Now, uh, national media outlets are also reporting that there is a recording where Trump explicitly says that he knows he has classified documents in his possession. But despite all that, Trump is saying that he has done nothing wrong and he defended himself in another video on Truth Social. There's never been anything like what's happened. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. Two members of his legal defense team quit this Friday and one of his aides was also indicted. Secret Service has already been conducting security sweeps here in federal courthouse. And also, we're expecting a big police presence since a lot of Trump supporters live in South Florida. Nitsa Soledad Perez, CGTN, Miami. Okay, for a closer look at what's going on, let's bring in our panelists from Miami. Jaden Horan is a political commentator. Here in Washington, D.C., Bruce Fine is a constitutional lawyer who worked for the Justice Department during the Reagan administration. Joseph Williams is a former senior editor for U.S. News and World Report. And Adolfo Franco is an attorney and Republican strategist. Welcome to all of you. Bruce Fine, uh, Donald Trump is the first U.S. president to be federally indicted by the country's justice system. And as we just heard from our reporter, 37 separate charges seven distinct types of crimes, 31 counts of violating the Espionage Act. And some of these charges carry a sentence of up to 20 years if found guilty, and if these sentences do run concurrently, then he could be something like 97 or 98 if he's found guilty before he gets out of prison. What is your assessment of this indictment? Well, first, although it's unprecedented that former President Trump has been indicted under federal charges, uh, it was close to that with President Richard Nixon after he resigned in confronting the possibility and likelihood of impeachment and removal, uh, he was on the verge of being indicted for obstruction of justice and perjury. I was there at the time at the Justice Department until President Ford pardoned him. So this is not the first time a former president has under serious federal investigation. 
Um, I believe uh, that having read the indictment, it truly is devastating. Actually, the indictment itself uh, recites the actual uh, audio tape in which Mr. Trump is saying, I know this is classified information that relates to attacking a foreign country. I know I'm not supposed to have it, and you shouldn't be seeing it. He's showing it to a writer. Uh, I, I could have declassified it if I'm president, but I'm not, where he's acknowledging that he knew what he was doing was wrong, and intent being a very important ingredient of uh, any federal criminal prosecution here. And this is a very granular indictment, uh, far more granular than one in New York, where he lays out uh, literally 30 uh, of the uh, instances in which the documents uh, had national defense information in them and that they were retained by Mr. Trump. It was not inadvertent. Um, they clearly had evidence that he was moving boxes out of the storage room into his residence and to Bedminster and then back again right. with a clear intent of trying to avoid or evade uh, the subpoena that had been issued. That's why, in fact, one of his aides, his valet, was indicted as well for lying about his knowledge of the movement of these, um, of these boxes of information. Uh, and he's also been charged with false statements conspiring to mislead the Department of Justice lawyers in claiming that they had searched everywhere in the boxes and had given all the classified or national defense information over. So this is very serious stuff. And I think it's important to recognize this is not, you know, the last stop here on federal charges. Uh, my view is that by the end of the summer, we'll have additional charges against Mr. Trump relating to insurrection on January 6th, especially in light of Mr. Mike Pence, the former vice president's statement openly this last week that Mr. Trump confronted him with a choice between going with Trump or the Constitution and mainly enforcing the 12th Amendment obligation to count electoral votes. And he chose the Constitution, which shows the in mental intent of Mr. Trump behind the January 6th march on the Capitol right. was to frustrate enforcement of the Constitution, which is the definition of insurrection. That's especially problematic for Mr. Trump yeah. because a violation of that prohibition would disqualify him for the White House under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Jaden Horan, uh, the prosecutor in this case, the special counsel, is Jack Smith. Let's listen to what he said on Friday afternoon. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. So what do you make of the indictment, uh, Jaden? And if we look at the Espionage Act, this is a law that was passed more than 100 years ago. It was subsequently amended several times. But is this what it was meant for? Of course not. But let's look at this uh, special prosecutor. Uh, he is one uh, who, who has the uh, ignominious experience of being overturned by both a liberal and a conservative unanimous Supreme Court for his overzealous prosecution of a former Republican governor. We know that this prosecutor looks to target big cases and goes for overexpansive uses of the law. Now, I'm not a lawyer. But I can say that the optics of this, as seen by the American people, and especially those on the right, are saying, once again, we have what appears to be an unequal application of the law and, furthermore, a stretch for what the purpose of these pieces of legislation were, like the Espionage Act, where you obviously are intending to do espionage in the United, from the United States to another for or on behalf of, of a foreign actor, as opposed to just haphazardly or in very poor judgment, managing documents, which our current president has admitted to doing so as well. So again, we get to the optics, we get to what really is being done by this special, this special prosecutor. And you know, as a non-lawyer looking at this, as someone who in the past has been a vociferous Trump supporter, especially on his policy merits, I have to look at this and say, is this what every single Republican candidate, is this is what the Republican voters are saying, is this every single Republican candidate's outcome? Should they question the defense establishment and the status quo? Because, you know, unfortunately here, the, the documents that were taken and the, the alleged audio specifically that comes from another news outlet talks about the president exposing the former secretary of defense basically in a lie 
claiming that he had done something that Trump was alluding that he didn't himself do. Mm. Um, you know, and I find it really ironic that these uh, these so-called Department of Justice and FBI, who spent the entire four years of the Trump administration leaking information against federal law yeah. uh, to the media constantly, are now standing behind yeah. disclosures and confidentiality and, and holding of documents. I just don't understand why then there were no investigations into leaks mm -hmm. that were not whistleblowers, mm -hmm. but just leaks to the media from the intelligence and defense apparatus. And now suddenly we're all clutching our pearls. You know, the president is being stacked with charges. Yeah. And basically they're trying, the former president is stacked with charges, basically trying to prevent him from running and possibly winning mm -hmm. in the next election. That's the optics from not just a Republican operative, but yeah. from how average Americans are looking at it. So if we're really going to, you know, we're going to prosecute a process crime and really break it down into it, then the equal application of law, as this special prosecutor said, who once again was, you know, has the unfortunate luck of being overturned by unanimous Supreme Court for an yeah. overzealous prosecution, needs to take the exact same standard that he's applying and turn it back on the same Justice Department for which he is speaking. Okay. Joseph, of course, this is not a purely uh, legal case. There are strong political implications in this case. Trump is facing multiple charges in other jurisdictions as well. There is the New York indictment. He could also be indicted in Georgia. And as Bruce pointed out, he could find, uh, face further charges later this year um, in connection with the January 6th case. Um, do you think this is effectively the end of his bid for another term, or could it perhaps boost his chances, uh, because there was one poll which I saw, which was published by Axios, which said this was about the New York indictment, uh, which said that the majority of people who were surveyed said, look, yes, um, they approve of the indictment in New York, but a plurality said that this is politi political. Well, there are two ways of looking at this. I mean, the first way of looking at it is President Trump has constantly defied political gravity. I mean, he's managed to do and, and say and get away with things that no modern president has been able to. It would have torched most careers. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. The second way of looking at it is Trump himself said that if he got indicted, there would be riots in the streets, that uh, his supporters said the same thing. Lindsey Graham, I remember famously once said that people would be so outraged that uh, the prosecutor would be feared to be torn from limb from limb. That has not happened. So I think we've got a couple of conflicting uh, narratives here. On the one hand, whenever Trump gets indicted, his poll numbers tend to go up, but only among Republicans. Mm. Uh, there is not widespread outrage here. There's a lot of outrage on the right. Uh, calls of trumped up charges, I think, are kind of overblown and minimize exactly what's going on here. I mean, yes, Jack Smith might have been overturned by U.S. Supreme Court, but on the other hand, he has been prosecuting war crime cases in The Hague. Uh, he also is very mindful. Merrick Garland himself was quite mindful uh, of, of, quote, unquote, the optics by appointing a special counsel and giving Jack Smith free reign to follow wherever the facts led. Mayor Garland himself did not want to take it on because of the quote unquote optics of looking like it was a political prosecution. So I think they're also minimizing the fact that these were multiple boxes over years that the National uh, Archives were trying to obtain from Trump, repeatedly yeah. asking him to return those documents. He not only did not return them, he evaded them. He told them he didn't have them when he had them. He told his lawyers not to tell them that he had them when he had them. Uh, so it's not just the fact that he was caught with his hand uh, in the peripheral cookie jar. It was the fact that they asked for these records back. If he had given them back when they asked for them, we wouldn't even be talking about this. But Donald Trump, in a lot of ways, can't really help himself. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is one of those things where his instincts probably led him down a dark path towards self-destruction. Is it the end of his political career? Premature to say so. Uh, is it the end of, of, of his possible legal exposure? Absolutely not. Adolfo Franco, uh, as we are all aware, there's a very fierce debate which is raging on right now. It has been going on for several weeks uh, on whether these are legally justified indictments or is this a political hit job against the former president? What do you think? Well, it's absolutely political persecution and it, it's a terrible day in America. Uh, that the opposition, the party in power, is trying to silence uh, the opposition or destroy the opposition. Uh, there are a lot of things to unpack here. There, we have a, a, a legal argument here, and we have political. First of all, you have one of the best 
lawyers in American history, Bruce Fine on, on this program, and um, an icon, somebody I greatly respect. But the fact of the matter is, obstruction of justice sounds so terrible. Uh, there is, first of all, no obligation under American law to cooperate with an investigation. Uh, obstruction requires state of mind. It requires willful conduct. It does not mean careless, we didn't do it, and so forth. So the obstruction of justice is a favorite process uh, uh, indictment for the Department of Justice in the first instance. Secondly, I don't think, Anand, that we can just gloss over Mr. Biden's documents and Mr. Biden having documents since 1974 as a senator where he had absolutely, they're really stolen documents. He had absolutely no right to have classified documents. They're uh, in his garage next to a car. And I don't see the outrage in the press. I don't see the co problems with this. Uh, these things were around for decades. This thing uh, should have been known when he was vice president. Again, had documents that were not in his possession. I didn't see raids into those homes. I, I don't see any of those concerns be being voiced. I do see something political here. We're expecting an indictment of his son this week. And this is a nice, convenient way to minimize that indictment and to take away from the headlines. That's sort of the, the political analysis. It will help President Trump. But I think, cynically, that is what the Democrats want. They want President Trump to be the nominee with this cloud hanging over him, with additional indictments to come down the pike. I agree with the other guests. But I'd like to have Bruce comment on this. There will be no trial on these things before the election. So what happens? You have an indicted president, a president with this cloud, can't clear his name on the ballot. What are the chances of appealing to independent voters, to Democrats in this situation, very little. So the game plan here, which is geared against the 75 million of us who support President Trump, is to simply say, you have your base and you're going to lose the election. That is what's really going on here in Washington, D.C. On the Espionage Act, please give me a break. The Espionage Act, without going into the history of it, the, the standards are so high to hurt the United States willfully, it's silly. There's only one section of the act, which I'm sure Bruce knows, 7093E, that's very narrow, that it could bring some type of charges. These are, with all due respect to use the term, trumped up prosecutions. Lastly, special counsel. This is a Garland appointee. Mr. Garland, no one's commented on this show, cleared this indictment. Mr. Garland is a political hack and a member of the Biden cabinet. So how can you, this is not an independent counsel, folks. This is a lawyer who is appointed by the attorney general, who is a political figure and answers to President Biden, yep. who cleared this indictment was the Biden White House with a wink and, Mar and Merrick Garland directly. If that's not political persecution, I don't know what is. Okay, Last, Bruce, Bruce. You know, you know now quickly, Mr. Comer said seven years ago, when there was evidence to indict Hillary Clinton, those were his words, no prosecutor in their right mind would bring an indictment against a presidential candidate. I suppose that standard has now changed. Okay, uh, Bruce, there was a lot there that was addressed to you. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> okay, well, well, thanks so much. Um, let me begin. Uh, maybe... People forget the Espionage Act. It was applied to get a criminal conviction. It was Bill Clinton's national security advisor for walking outside of the National Archives with classified national defense information. Uh, that same statute was utilized to get a conviction against John Deutsch, former CIA director, for having classified information, national defense information, on his private computer. And indeed, it was also used against former CIA director David Petraeus. So the idea that this statute has never been used in any such way Sportsman is simply a counter-historical description of its it enforcement. But it's been used differently, Bruce. If you look at the facts, you're, 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 it's been very different facts than what's being suggested here. And we have no doubt that neither Mr. Petraeus nor Mr. Deutsch nor Mr. Berger were spying for the Soviet Union or enemies, and yet the statute was applied. Secondly, with regard to Mr. Trump, uh, you did ask, well, was there, I agree, you don't have to co cooperate. You can just let these people search where they think they can find the incriminating information. But here, the indictment alleges quite clearly that there was affirmative effort to move 
literally scores of boxes yes. out of the storage like room that. into the residence for the specific purpose of evading the search uh, warrant. That is uh, affirmative action, not just not cooperation. That's, that's all speculation on your part. To... That's entirely speculative on your part. You have no idea what the president's state of mind was, what he knew, what he was advised. You're speculating. But they have, well, of course, you have Who's to have they? a trial. But you can't. Yeah, you can't but, but you forward, already come to the conclusion he's guilty. You've come to the conclusion, the Bruce, he's guilty. There were 30, and, and, the, and the, okay. the valet said he received instructions from Mr. Trump yeah. to move the 30 some boxes. It wasn't one or two boxes, it was scores of boxes. Okay, now, well, listen, Bruce, listen, Bruce just one point. Mr. Trump and Trump. Mr. Right. Why you Mr. Biden gave instructions yes. to move boxes to, to his university in, in, in Delaware. Is okay. that a crime? There's just okay. There's Let's just one more thing, Bruce. I want to move on, but I just want I want you to address the point, Bruce. I just wanted to address the point that Adolfo made about uh, Biden having documents in his garage. No, Excuse me? documents from being a senator. <laughs> no. With regard to Mr. Biden, the fact is there's an open investigation. It hasn't concluded yet. Why does yeah. anybody think he's been exonerated? He's not. You still have an investigation underway. I'm not defending Mr. Biden's reckless um, uh, control. The difference, however, at least with regard to why there hasn't been a search warrant is because he consented and said you can come and search everything. Right. That wasn't the of Mr. Trump, which is why the yeah. FBI agents. Okay, I want to move on. I want to move on to our other guest, Jaden. Um, you know, as I said earlier on, this is the first time a former president has been federally indicted, and I'm wondering, you know, whether you see this as a political hit job or whether one sees this as a legally justified indictment. But what kind of precedent uh, does it set? I mean, are Republicans going to go after a former Democrat president when they're sitting in power? I mean, I certainly think, once again, we have an issue where the norms have been shattered in what seems to be a personal vendetta against the former president. And unfortunately, I will have to say that, yes, once, once these norms are broken, they're broken. But that doesn't mean the entire country falls apart, and that doesn't mean that our political system breaks down. Certainly in other countries, former, former heads of state have been incarcerated, and then in, in the case of the current president of Brazil, uh, later exonerated and elected back into office. So uh, it certainly weakens our standing in the world. It certainly opens the possibility for more retaliatory political uh, prosecutions in the future. But I don't think it necessarily undermines uh, the American system. Uh, you know, Richard Nixon was the first president to resign directly before an impeachment. Our nation certainly survived a president, an imperial president sitting in power for four terms four terms that resulted in the constitutional amendment to prevent such a thing from ever occurring again. Um, and it survived the Civil War. Yeah. So I think these these spasms and these seizures that happen yeah. um, are of, of the moment and of the time in which we are in. But I don't think that they're going to fundamentally alter the American constitutional system. Joseph, you know, you were saying earlier on uh, that the last time uh, Trump was indicted, which was uh, in the New York indictment, that his approval ratings went up. But let's look at the big picture here, the broad picture here. If we look at the time when Donald Trump became president, that was when the investigation started. There was Russiagate. There was all kinds of accusations against him. In fact, they dogged his presidency for uh, the four years. Then we had the Mueller report. Then we had the Durham report, uh, which basically uh, debunked most of that. Uh, now he's running for president again. Uh, he's now facing charges again, uh, accusations again. Let's say, and I know this is a hypothetical question, but let's say he is the nominee for the Republican Party. He faces Joe Biden in the 2024 election and loses. How are his, reporter, uh, how are his supporters going to look at that? As a free and fair election? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say because we've got a lot of alternative realities flying around here. I mean, you know, we have had presidents, sitting presidents under investigation. I mean, one Bill Clinton comes to mind. Uh, and we've gotten to the point where we have to assume that the rule of law is paramount. We have to assume that the, uh, Jack Smith uh, outlined this precisely, that he is innocent until proven guilty. These charges do not prove guilt. 
the investigation alone does not prove guilt. However, the facts may, as we know them right now, indicate a strong uh, 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 predilection towards uh, Mr. Uh, Trump having a real problem. Now, it's hard to say whether or not they're going to see this as a free and fair election because they didn't see the last election as a free and fair election. So I think that alternative reality is probably going to hold. However, I will say that a lot of these convictions of the Janu January 6th rioters, I think, has put a chilling effect on any kind of political violence that we might see in relation to Donald Trump. I mean, nothing uh, clears the mind more than a 20-year, 15, 20-year sentence in federal prison that this is probably not a good idea to engage in a, a, a riot on behalf of, of a president who clearly lost an election. So I don't. I, I think that that the the, the president, the, the Republican Party, and, the, and those on the right have moved so far to the right and are in such thrall to Trump that it would be very difficult to convince them right. of anything other than fairness in the legal system as well as the uh, political system. Yeah, Bruce, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, is this going to give more ammo to Trump supporters who are going to say, if he loses, that is, uh, in 2024, or if? He, it, they make it very difficult for him to campaign for the election, that this is a system that's rigged against our candidate? Well, I think it's premature just based on the, where we stand on June 6th, because I do think that the more crippling indictments are yet to be issued by the end of the summer. I think they will, out of Georgia, and then relating to January 6th. Um, Georgia, we have, of course, the notorious telephone call where Mr. Trump's asking the Secretary of State, well, can you find another 11,400 votes? Mm. The Fulton grand jury and the prosecutor there have been intensely investigating this issue. Uh, and so the accumulation of the accusations and the volume of the incriminating evidence right. um, uh, is going to, in my judgment, uh, yeah, cripple Mr. Trump's ability to campaign. Uh, now, I also would agree with the prior observation that I do think with a substantial percentage of Trump reporters, supporters, it doesn't matter, no matter how the 2024 election is won, is yeah. run, if Mr. Trump loses, they'll say it was rigged. Yeah. Mr. Trump's already saying it's rigged in advance. So I don't think that they're susceptible to a reasonable okay. argument. But I think the majority of the American people are able to see a fair election and okay. have an opportunity to challenge where it's thought that there's any fraud and go to court if you think it's fraudulent and accept okay. the outcome of it. Uh, and that's what I think is what continues to distinguish the United States from most other countries in the world. Okay, we are going to have to leave it there. We have run out of time. Thank you to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C.